Crafty Gemini and welcome to Flash Sale Friday right here on the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel. Thank you for joining me. I post instructional video tutorials here. I also offer online courses, which is what we're going to be talking about today. If you follow me on social media, you're probably tired uh, of, of hearing me talk about leggings, but this is the last night for the early bird sale price of my new online legging sewing course. So I'm going to make another pair of leggings here in a different size. Uh, we're working with view A, which is a high contoured waistband. I'm making these as a gift for my youngest sister. And I'm going to walk you through. We'll be sharing some tips and tricks on working with stretch knit fabrics. And while we wait for a couple minutes, because we got on a little bit early today, that's something new and unheard of for us. Uh, but the more we go live, the more we kind of get everything situated. So this was pretty easy to jump on tonight with y'all. Go ahead and leave me a comment and let me know where you are tuning in from. So I live here in North Central Florida and I'm coming to you from my home studio. I'm going to pop onto my page and make sure that I show up live here with y'all. And while we wait for a couple minutes, because we Yowzers. So, sounds like... It says that the sound is wonky. Yeah, try the DB thing on it. Put it down. Sorry about that. I mean, I know I talk loud anyways, but... It's always something with these technological issues. Can y'all hear me better? Let's see if that sounds a little bit better. I'm going to wait. Uh, let's see. Anybody? We're going to wait to see if anybody can. S well, that sucks. Let me see if we can figure this out real quick for y'all. Thanks, Val, for the super chat. Oh, they said it's better. It's better. It's better. Uh, good now. Okay. It sounds good. Sound is not only weird. Let's see. Carla, is it working good? Okay. They say it's better. Let me, let me check real quick. Can I hear myself? Well, that sucks. Oh, there. It sounds good. Okay, great. All right, perfect. Okay. They say it sounds way better, less distorted, much better, better, better. Thank you. Okay, good. All right, so now that we're in business, and of course I talk louder, so it's, you know how that goes. All right. Phew. Thank you all. I appreciate the comments coming in so that we can get things sorted out. All right, so we're talking about leggings tonight and my new online leggings course. Of course, I'm wearing another pair of leggings. These are capri length, and this is um, heathered blue. Those of you that got in on those kits that we sold last week when we opened up the course and you got the heathered blue, this is the fabric that you get. So super cool, comfy, and stretchy. And I'm going to try and keep an eye on here for the questions. That way I can be giving y'all tips and tricks and answering questions as we go along and stitch along. Uh, Boonchilla is asking, do you use a serger? So you can, you don't have to, as you can see, I went live on my Facebook page this week and I was sewing on my daughter's sewing machine and we've been so busy here that I haven't even moved it. So we're going to be working on my daughter's sewing machine here. This is just a simple computerized sewing machine. And in the video lessons, I should say, there's 41 step-by-step -step video lessons. I show you how to make the leggings. Three different sizes and two different waistband finishing options, all done on a sewing machine. But then there are bonus video lessons. So I have three serger bonus videos and one on a cover stitch. So I show you, if you do have a serger, how you would use it to put together view A, right? Because there are some spots in the leggings where you can use a serger to construct it, but there's other spots where you can't. Do we have any problems? No. Okay, good. And then I show you how to hem that same pair of leggings that I make on the serger. I show you how to hem it on the cover stitch machine. Okay. So that's what the course is about. So for those of you that have a serger in a closet, I would first, before you jump in wanting to make like leggings or any kind of garment with the serger is to kind of like familiarize yourself with the serger first. So my number one recommendation would be Pull up the user manual. If you don't have it in the box, maybe you bought the machine used or it was like a hand-me-down, go on Google and type in the make and model of that serger and type in just PDF user manual. And most all the ones I've ever looked for, I can find them there even for vintage machines. So if you can pull up the PDF document for the user manual, that is definitely a good start to help you uh, learn where everything is on that specific make and model so that you can learn to thread it. Second place I would go is here on YouTube, right? Type in the make and model of your serger and see if somebody has already done a threading tutorial for that specific make and model. It's really important that you find some type of resource or information for the specific model you have. Most of them thread similarly, but different brands can have different little things, especially if the machine is 40 years old versus a five-year-old serger. So 
Start with that. Play around with the stitches and stuff before you jump into making a garment. I would hate for you to buy some, you know, fancy fabric that you love that's expensive and then take it to the serger because remember, the serger has a blade. It's cutting as it's finishing the edge. And when you cut the fabric away, you can't put it back. So for your first or second or even third pair, I would recommend that you get used to the construction steps in the leggings course, make it on a sewing machine, and then start playing with your serger. Now, if you are familiar with your serger and you use it for everything, you, you can probably just jump right to those bonus videos and be able to crank it out. Once you watch all the lessons on understanding stretch, the size chart, you know, all the other kind of behind the, the actual sewing steps that you should uh, pay attention to and take into account, right? So do that. Kay is asking, are, any are there any leggings kits available? So the answer to that is currently no. We had about 100 kits last week when we released the course and they sold out in minutes. And so we're working to restock it. I've been getting a lot of messages and emails from those of you that are in the course or want to join the course, but you need a kit because either you're not shopping outside of your home or you really don't know what fabric, needles, and thread and all that to use. So here's my answer to that. In the fabric world, it's a little bit different than buying a product, right? So if I need to restock scissors or just the needle packs, that's not that big of a deal because I can always order it from a distributor who carries that product in stock at all times. Okay, fabric is a little bit different because as you know, collections end, right? There is an end date to some fabric. So I, as a business owner, do not like to pre kind of like take people's money in anticipation of fabric, especially when there's fabric for kits that need to be a specific color that people are ordering or a print. Okay. Because if I oversell something by 30 kits and then I try to reorder and the manufacturer tells me, Hey, we don't have any more of that fabric. Now I've oversold it by 30 kits and I can't get my hands on that fabric. Am I losing money by not taking people's money up front? Absolutely. But can I sleep better at night? knowing that I'm not taking these kind of like wait list pre-order things. Yes, absolutely. And that's how I prefer to run my business. So when it's something like an interfacing or a hard product that I know I can constantly get back in stock, fine. But fabric, I don't want to sell y'all, you know, 50 people want the kit with this fabric because they love it. And then the manufacturer tells me that they can't get it to me anymore. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take your money without knowing for sure that I can get this fabric. Another thing in the world of fabric is that sometimes the put up, meaning how much yardage comes on the bolt, can differ from what the manufacturer posts and says, right? So if I order a specific fabric, say this print, I order and they tell me there's 15 yards on the bolt, I might get the 15 yards and say, okay, each kit has two yards, so 15 divided by two, I could potentially sell seven kits, right, and have a little leftover, but when I start to cut the fabric for the kits, say I only have 10 yards or 11 and a half. And now I sold seven. So now I'm stuck. You see what I'm saying? I don't like to get into that. That's not how I run my business. When I get the fabric in stock, we will relist and restock. If you are enrolled in the leggings course, you will get an email from us telling you, Hey, we just restocked the leggings kits. Basically, this is what we have. This is what you can choose from where I know physically I have these kits in hand. We'll put them in the mail for you. Okay. So sorry for the long winded answer, but that is the answer on kits. So far, if you all are in the Helene Cardigan course, you saw that you got an email today. All students got an email today saying, hey, the cardigan kits were restocked, okay? So we will message out, uh, you know, to all the students that are in the class so you can find them, okay? Winona is asking, what sizes do you make them in? So the pattern that we use is a separately sold pattern. We have some in stock right now in the online shop. You can go to craftygemini.com slash shop. You'll see it there. It's the Jali Clara leggings. And the, the one pattern sheet includes 27 sizes. So let me open the big sheet for you, just so you all can see what it even looks like. In this big old sheet are 27 sizes, a little girl toddler size two to a US woman size 22. So this is the hard copy pattern that we sell and we do offer it at a discounted price um, to help our students out since you know obviously you're signing up for the course with me, you can uh, save some money and buy the pattern from us as well. Okay, so 27 different sizes. Let's see. Hi, Debbie. Thanks for tuning in. She's catching the live. It's been a while. All right. Amy says, I'm glad you're like that. That way no one gets burned. Absolutely. Like I said, am I totally losing money? For sure. I don't even want to think about it, right? But can I sleep at night in peace? Yes. Tomorrow's another day. We will look at what we have in inventory and get my team to start packing and shipping kits. It's just the way I prefer to do things. 
keeps me a little bit more sane and everybody, you know, you're not dealing with all this customer service on the back end. What happened? What happened? Now we have to refund 35 people. No, 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 no. Sorry, y'all. That's not how we do it. Denise says the fabric world is crazy. She owned a store. Absolutely. And then not only that, that, that you might end up with less than what they told you is on the bolt, but sometimes you get it and you're cutting and cutting and cutting. And then all of a sudden the second or third bolt, there's a huge defect that repeats itself every 22 inches. And you're like, how am I supposed to cut any yardage out of this? You know? Yeah, the companies will give your money back or try to re, you know, replace it or whatever, but sometimes there's no more of that fabric in stock. And then what are you going to do? You, you, the kits include two yards and every 20 inches you have like a hole in the fabric. What? It happens all the time. And especially in apparel fabrics, right? Because they're different fiber content, but it does happen in quilting cottons as well. All right, Linda says she's ordered two more cardigan kits and she hasn't even made the first one yet. That's perfect because we sold those at such a discounted price, Linda. You're going to have the fabric, the needles, the thread right there for you when you're ready to get started, okay? All right, Evie says, just tuned in, used to being your first Crafty Gemini group. Oh, I'm probably talking about the quilt club. She says, how much is the course? All right, cool, let's jump into that. So my new leggings course for the Jolie Clara pattern is $65 right now. That includes just the video courses. There's 41 video lessons uh, where I walk you through step-by-step -step everything. I mean, from choosing the fabric. We even go through how to measure the stretch percentage on any fabric that you want to get your hands on. Uh, and then I go through four different fa fabrics that are kind of like the most popular ones that you'll find, right? Cotton spandex, a nylon spandex for active wear and stuff like that, with double brush polyester spandex, and then also a rayon spandex. So they all have spandex in them because the pattern requires that we use a fabric that has a minimum of 60% stretch along both grain lines. So crosswise and the lengthwise grain. And we go into all the specifics of that. I'm not just gonna be like, this is how you make leggings. And then you're like using the wrong needle, the wrong thread, the wrong fabric. That's not how I roll. I'm trying to set my students up for the most successful results, okay? Every time I offer a course or a tutorial or whatever it is, I hear people tell me, this was my first time making clothes. This was my first time using my machine and I was able to make this. This was my first time dealing with stretch fabrics and I was able to make this. As much and as fast as I talk, that's how thorough I like to be in what I do. It's a little bit extra for some people, but for the beginner, it's absolutely what you need. So 41 different video lessons for a pair of leggings sounds insane to people, but if you're in the course and you watch the videos, you know that it's like, oh yeah, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, I would have never thought of that. Oh yeah, that's important to know. So those are all the things that I like to teach you in those lessons as well. Let's do a little roll call. If you're already signed up for the Clara Leggings course, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And if you've had a chance to watch any of the video lessons, let me know what part of the course you're liking so far. I know a bunch of you are already in the course, and I've seen pictures all over Facebook and in my private group on Facebook, I have a group for sewing clothes called uh, Sewing Clothes with Crafty Gemini. You can request to be added to that private group and we'll let you all in. Usually it takes a couple hours or a day or so for me or one of the admins to uh, grant you access to that. It's on Facebook again and it's called Sewing Clothes with Crafty Gemini. If you're on the fence about joining this course, I'm telling you there are already dozens of people who have made them. So if you request access to that group, if we can let you in tonight before the sale price expires, you can scroll right through and see people's leggings. They've already made them. It's amazing, amazing. Carla says she signed up from the first day. Um, Rebecca says she started watching. They're great. Denise is in. Mary Grace is already signed up. So is Linda. Eunice is signed up and she's already cut out her first pair of leggings. April signed up from Australia. Isn't it amazing that we can reach so many people online via the internet? In Australia, she's taking a course with me. Even people that live in my area can't take an, uh, an in-person class with me right now. So this is great that we can reach so many people all around the world. Anne says she's signed up. She's waiting for her pattern to arrive. Uh, Janice says, I've watched all of them. You're a great teacher just trying to decide which size while waiting for fabric. So in the video course, Janice, I'm sure you probably already watched the videos where I talk about what you need to do as far as choosing size to adjust based on whether you're using a fabric that has more than that minimum 60% stretch in both directions or what to do if you're working with a fabric that has slightly less, right? Sometimes we see the pattern, it says 60% minimum in both directions, but you have a fabric that you are like in love with and maybe it only has 50% stretch in both directions. So in the video course, I share with you tips on how to basically adjust which size you're making based on how much stretch the fabric has. Because people, this is not plug and play. This is not, I grab the pattern, I grab some fabric I like and start making them. You have to understand how 
the pattern size that you choose relates to your body measurements, relates to the amount of stretch in that fabric. This stuff is gonna come with time. So if you're a beginner, 41 video lessons where I teach you how to make them is gonna give you the start that you need, okay? If you've ever grabbed a sewing pattern and started to make a garment and had epic fail results, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like, you feel like it's you, but it's not really you. It's just, you don't have the education and the knowledge just yet. So that's why I have 41 lessons for this video course, because even if you know nothing about stretch knits, I want you to know more once you finish even this project, okay? So that's just kind of how I do my things. All right, so the price, <laughs> Maybe I didn't say, I think I did say the price. $65 right now is the early bird sale price. So tonight at midnight, when that countdown on the signup page expires, the price is going up to $97, okay? Which is still a steal because if I teach this class in person, there's no way I can cover all this information and give you videos to take home. You would have to pick one view, one length of the leggings, and two months later, you probably wouldn't even remember what you did in class, and it would be $125, okay? So at 65 bucks, that is like the best bargain for all those videos where it doesn't expire, right? You get indefinite access to the video course lessons. So I know a lot of my students who don't have the time, they still sign up for the class, and they just leave it there because they know they saved money. The price is never gonna drop down to 65 bucks again. You can ask anybody that's been in any of my clubs or my courses, once the early bird sale price expires, the price never goes down. Even if we offer a sale code or something, it's never gonna go down to 65. You can quote me on that. I ain't never done it and I ain't gonna do it because it's not fair, right, to the people that are signing up now. Like y'all, if you're signing up at 65 bucks, you got in early, you've been following me, you keep up with my stuff and you get the best bargain. That's the way that I see it. Okay, so let's see. I've signed up, I got my kit, but my pattern hasn't arrived yet because I've got something on back order. Oh, I know, I know. Lisa, send us an email at bea at craftygemini.com and let us know your situation and let's see what we can do about that because um, we are still waiting on that Bozal um, Duet Fuse interfacing that I know exactly what you're talking about. So just send us an email, say, you know, Vanessa told me to email y'all and um, we'll see what we can do about that, okay? So, Joyce says she's in the course, but waiting for the fabric. So we are restocking. Don't think that we just, you know, we're signing up for the course and we're going to leave you hanging. I have fabric on order a lot, actually, and some really cute prints. Um, I've ordered some stretch knit, some cotton spandex from Art Gallery, which is like adorable, adorable prints. So I'm waiting on that order. And I have a bunch of solids. I listen to y'all because you email me and tell me, hey, I want more black. I want more navy. You know, you just want solid everyday kind of comfy uniform leggings to make. And so we have a lot of black cotton spandex on order, all that stuff. But again, until I can feel it and touch it, I'm not gonna restock because I need to make sure I have them and that I can get them shipped out to you at, you know, a decent time, okay? All right, so uh, let's see. Um, okay, some of y'all are just waiting on your pattern. We've been shipping patterns daily here. As the orders come in, we're shipping them out. So if we have it in stock, we're getting it out as soon as we can, okay? So I'm just gonna go through, because I see we have a lot of new people in here who maybe are not familiar with the course or with the price and all that. So the new online course features 41 step-by-step -step high definition video lessons. You can make the leggings in three different sizes. So this is shorts and, and in 27 different sizes. So did I say sizes? I meant three different lengths mid thigh short, capri and ankle length, and then in three different, let me see, <laughs> 27 sizes and three lengths. Okay, so here are the, the, the lengths. Short, capri, okay, which is my favorite, and then full length, okay? So those are the three different length options that you have, but then you have 27 sizes. This is like a woman's size four. This is like a kid's size nine. This is like a kid's size five. So there's, I mean, like I'm making a pair of uh, shorts for my sister. She does a lot of biking, so she wants the high contoured waistband and she wants the mid thigh short. So that's what I'm working on here. And actually I'm gonna get to sewing in a second. But let me show you, if you tuned into Facebook, if you only follow me on YouTube, you should definitely follow me on Facebook and Instagram too because I'm super active on all those pages, okay? So uh, last, what day was it, Wednesday? No, what night did we go live on Facebook? Tuesday or something, I don't remember. But one of these nights I went live on my Facebook page to talk about the leggings course and I whipped up this pair of super cute kitty leggings for my daughter. 
Everybody saw me do it in less than an hour. I was chatting, distracted, answering questions, and I still was able to put the entire pair of leggings together. Well, from that same yard, I had a little bit of fabric left over. I thought maybe I could make my daughter some shorts, but I didn't quite have enough width for that, for her size 11. And so I had enough to make a cutesy little capri in a size six for my friend who uh, has a daughter who would love this print also. Now I did, it was super close. I had a little piece of selvage that I had to include in here. Luckily it still stretches cause it's a knit. It's not as densely woven as like uh, the selvage on quilting cotton but it's like all up in the crotch area. Nobody's gonna see it, so I told her. And if you can't see it, just have her wear them as pajamas. But I did not wanna let that fabric go to waste and it was just enough to make her this. So out of one yard of 58 inch wide, look how cute. When I tell you you can make them in 27 different sizes, it's like my favorite part. So my sister's like, oh yeah, I saw your leggings. I need some shorts like that. I'm like, okay, what size you need? So I'm making her those in a size four um, in the shorts length but with the high waistband, the view A. So if you're signing up for the leggings course or you're kind of one of those that is like, oh, you're on the fence and not sure, start off with view B in the short length, okay? Of all the options you have for the two, because there's two different waistbands, there's one that's just a turned under elastic, that's the simplest way, that's view B. Then the one that I'm wearing here and the one that you can see here is the high-waisted contoured or yoga waistband. You see how this whole separate chunk is a separate waistband? Okay, this one has a few more steps because it just has such a clean and professional finish to it. Plus it like snatches you up nice and high, which is what I prefer all the way up here at my actual natural waist, okay? So that one is um, a little bit more, I would say fidgety in the fingers to work with. So definitely if you're someone who's like a beginner, you're thinking maybe I should sign up for the class or I don't know if I have the skills for this yet, sign up for it and make view B shorts. And the reason I say shorts, even if you don't wear shorts, is because that way, if you do mess up completely, like you just do everything wrong and you don't follow my videos, at least you're only using that much fabric, right? And once you work through one pair of the simple one, view B and shorts, I promise you, you are going to have more confidence to tackle the second pair. For sure, there's no way around it. Because when you first start off, you don't know what's coming. You can't anticipate the steps. But when you work yourself through one, even if it comes out wonky, don't worry about it. The next time, it's gonna get even better, okay? But you can see this is another pair that I had made for myself. And this fabric sold out like hotcakes. See, this is one of those fabrics. People were hoping for me to get this one back in stock. And let me tell you, unfortunately, they don't have any more of this fabric and I cannot reorder it in. It's digitally printed nylon spandex. So yes, I'm devastated just as much as y'all, but those of you that got in on those kits last week, your fabric, you know, you probably got your fabric. Some of y'all already were posting pictures of your kits arriving. All right, so that's that. Cotton spandex, we have all the different lengths, all the things, okay? Let me pop in here real quick and then I'm gonna start sewing up these leggings. We're 20 minutes in. Uh, Tamara says the contoured waistband is so nice. It is super, super comfortable for sure. And you're getting two layers of the fabric here at the waistline, okay? It's not just one, it's two. And if you look at the pattern pieces, remember I show you how to trace off the pattern pieces, how to uh, cut the pattern pieces out of the pattern template, then how to cut the pieces out of fabric, how to transfer your notches, fold lines. I cover every single step in my new video course. Now, if you're wanting to sign up, we've been putting the link here for you in the chat. You can also go to courses.craftygemini.com and you'll see the option there to, um, to sign up for the Clara Leggings course. So here you can see, and these are actually the ones that I make uh, in the course, like on camera with the sewing machine. These are the ones that I make. So you see how this is the top part of the waistband here? is also another layer. You cut out two waistband pieces on the fold. So you get an extra layer of um, compression, shall we say. <laughs> All right. Is a zig, Patricia's asking, is a zigzag stitch required? I have an ancient 1953 Singer and it's straight stitch only. For this project, you will need a zigzag, unfortunately, mostly because of the elastic portion. There are seams where we tackle them just on a straight stitch, but for hemming, and um, for top stitching the gusset and the elastic and the two different waistbands, you're gonna need a zigzag stitch. So unfortunately a vintage straight stitch here will not work too well. All right. Um, Christina says, when I finally make them, I plan on doing the shorts exactly for that reason, fabric. Absolutely, stretch fabric and if it's a decent quality, it's gonna cost you, you know, that stuff costs money. So definitely start off with the shorts. All right. 
Great. Marielle says, got it. Thanks, B. She's all signed up. Plus, she ordered the pattern. Awesome. Kelly says, I'm new to your channel. I saw you for the first time last week. I just got my kit and pattern yesterday. I'm so excited. I am so excited for you, Kelly. Thank you. Welcome a newbie to the channel. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the gusset piece here. And that's one thing I should mention is that this pattern doesn't have a center front seam that runs here, okay? There's a gusset, which is a little triangular piece that you insert between the legs. And then there is no side seam as well. You see how it's just full? So if you're working with directional prints or some funky, you know, floral or like a bunch of wild colors and stuff, it's great because that way you don't have to break up the, the pattern and the design. So the design of this pattern, it works out great because it's just one smooth piece. You have a seam running down the inside, but not on the outside or down the front center. I love, love, love the pattern drafting on this thing. All right. So look, look at this. This is shorts for my sister. <laughs> Don't they look little? You might notice that when you go to make view A, you'll see that you're like, uh, surely I traced the pattern or cut it out wrong, but it's not. It's because remember I said this is the uh, view A, the high waist one. So that's the, the bottom part of the shorts, but the waistband, I already went ahead and prepped part of it is gonna be added onto the top, this one, okay? So let me get started on this. I'm gonna peek in here to my chat. Oh, I see some of you are just waiting on your patterns. Yeah, Linda says, oh, you can't get that black and white fabric in. I'm telling you, the fabric game is rough. It's like, and that's the thing with fabric manufacturers too. Like when they guesstimate how much they think they're going to sell, right? They place in a big order for however many thousands of yards. And then when it does better than they anticipate, it's like, oh no, what do we do now? Because most of the time you can't reorder that stuff. So it's like you get in on one and that's it. You order what you can. So I'm working on it. I'm trying to pick some funky stuff for the funkies of us. And then I'm getting, uh, you know, a bunch of solids and more muted things. For those of you that want to try it out, maybe, I know some people are like, I'm not into leggings. I don't wear leggings. 27 sizes. You can make this for anybody. I mean, look at this. Just in a couple of days, I made myself another pair. I made a pair for my daughter. I made another pair for my friend who has um, a five-year-old. And I'm making a pair for my sister. You can crank these out, Okay. Hi, Karen. She says, sorry, I'm joining late. No worries. We're here. Just chatting it up, talking about some stretch knits. Now for the needles, remember that you want to be using a ballpoint or Jersey needle when you're sewing with this. And of course we go into detail on all that in the video course. Uh, if you are someone who got in on one of our kits when they were in stock, then you know, you're getting the right needles and you're getting a five pack of them. So you have plenty there to crank out a ton of leggings, shorts, and, and one thing that I was thinking about, because I've been hearing from a lot of you like, oh, I don't really wear leggings. I don't really like them. If you join the course, maybe because you want to make leggings for somebody else, consider making them for yourself as like pajama loungewear. Because just because we say that they're leggings doesn't mean you have to wear skin tight leggings, right? Not everybody likes to wear, and I'm just moving the needle position over because I need a quarter of an inch seam. Uh, not everybody likes to wear leggings, but guess what? If you still work with a stretch fabric, but you work with a fabric that has a lot more stretch than the pattern calls for, and you still cut out your size, you're going to be swimming in those leggings. So they're going to be leggings, but they're not going to be snug leggings on you. So that's what I like to do when I make them out of double brush polyester spandex, which is a DBP. It usually has upwards of a hundred to 120% stretch. Okay. So you're getting twice as much stretch than what the pattern calls for. And that means they're going to be extra comfy. So don't think that, oh, you know, this is just for me to make super skin hugging stuff. Not really. You can even make the shorts version and make it out of um, the nylon spandex fabric. Make yourself some swim shorts instead of wearing like a swim bottom bikini. You, it's the same fabric. It's nylon spandex, right? It's um, uh, swimwear, activewear, dancewear. It's all that waterproof fabric, you know? So there's a lot of ways that you can incorporate this leggings pattern without it just being the leggings that you're kind of thinking in your head. Uh, let's see. Could you modify this pattern to make them more like yoga pants instead of leggings? Absolutely. I don't see why not. You know, I don't cover pattern hacking and pattern drafting because imagine if for a simple pair of leggings, <laughs> I film over 200 video clips. That's what I filmed for this course. Over 200 video clips that I edited down, okay, to 41 videos. If I were to cover pattern drafting, that would be an entire course on its own. But yes, you can find hacks online and stuff for you to hack the legs of the patterns. And I'm guessing you're saying like by making it come down more straight line versus in. 
That's a simple fix, you know? And maybe just start off on some cheaper fabric, make yourself a pair. And whenever you do this, where you pattern hack stuff, save the actual pattern piece that you created the hack from, because if it's an epic win, you're gonna wanna recreate that. And then you're like, oh, I, I can't really remember how much I measured or how, much, how far I went down, you know? So definitely, but you can. I had somebody else ask me like, I'm really, really tall. If um, the ankle length leggings are still too short for me, like they have a 32 inch inseam, can I make them longer? Absolutely. They're just giving you the option to have three different lines that you can cut right at if you want mid thigh short, capri, or full length. If you're taller, make them longer. If you don't want mid thigh shorts, extend them a little bit past so they land like right above your knee. Guys, this is what is amazing about making your own clothes. You can do whatever you want. There are no, you know, plug and play black and white rules. You can change things up to suit your needs. But again, that's gonna come with time and experience and you gotta know what you're doing to construct even the, the, the basic pattern at hand. All right, let me make sure my uh, needle position, okay. Now I'm getting more used to this little machine. It's my daughter's. All my machines, as you can tell, they're huge and they're set back here in the tables and this shot where I can still work and chat with y'all seems to work fine. So you're going to see this. I've been talking, talking, talking. I'm about to get to where I've sewn up the gusset and I'm about to hold up a pair of legit shorts. They're not hemmed. They don't have a waistband, but like in this little bit of talking, oops, not needle down, presser foot down. That's what I meant to press. My machine obviously has a button where I can press it and the presser foot goes down. So I pressed what was in that spot from memory and it was not that on this machine for sure. All right. So I have the gusset inserted and it's basically, I'm sewing it to the second half of the body piece here. And then I just sew up the legs and that makes the entire thing. So I will say, as far as pattern pieces goes, because if you're a beginner, you know, if you pick up a sewing pattern that has 15 pieces, you're probably not gonna work your way through that by yourself if you don't have a lot of sewing experience, okay? These shorts, the simple view B that I recommend y'all start with if you're kind of new to this whole stretchy game, is um, only features two pieces. We cut out the front, the back, the legs, all of that on one piece, it's just cut on the fold. And then there's a little gusset that gets inserted, two pieces. This one that has the view A, the high contoured waistband, the yoga waistband here, features three pieces. So it's still the front, the back, the legs is one piece. Then we have the little triangular gusset, and then you have the separate waistband pieces, that's it. Okay, 41 videos with only three pieces, you're gonna be a leggings making pro after you take my video course, okay? So definitely sign up if that's something that you wanna learn and remember that I don't just teach uh, techniques and skills like lectures. I teach via projects because I know when I teach kids, when I teach adults, myself, there is nothing better than when you actually have something to show for your class, right? It's great when you go to a lecture and you learn and you listen and you're like, wow, I learned so much. But you don't have anything to show for it in your hands. I'm not like that. I'm very practical. I'm very like functional. I need things to show for my work, okay? And so that's how I like to teach. If you're gonna leave and say, wow, I learned so much about stretch fabrics, but you didn't go home with nothing that was stretch fabrics, then to me, that's not really teaching. It's like you didn't get to apply the skills and techniques that you were learning. So. Yeah, you're learning how to make leggings, but I guarantee you, you're gonna have a lot more knowledge built up that's gonna help you with any future projects that you tackle that require stretch knit fabrics, okay? All right. Annette says, I'm ready to be a pro. Girl, start off with them shorts, just crank them out, crank them out, I'm telling you. When people start seeing these, they're gonna be like, oh, can you make me a pair? All y'all gonna have a side hustle business. <laughs> making comfy leggings for your family and friends. All right. Let's see. Okay, so Jean is asking, are there two crafty Gemini shops? I can't find something. So let's recap this real quick. The courses, we're in the process of um, 
transferring all of our video courses and clubs to a new platform that gives you a way better user experience. The videos play like gorgeous. It takes up the screen. You have the list of all the different titles of the video lessons on the left hand side. It's just a lot neater and cleaner. So if you're just signing up for the leggings course and it's the first class that you're taking on that new platform, there's only two classes on there, the Helene cardigan and the leggings. So if you didn't sign up for the cardigan course last month, this is going to be your first time signing up for the leggings course. It's going, it's not going to take your login from the regular craftygemini.com website. So what you need to do is just create a new account. You can use the same email and the same password that you use on the regular, right? Craftygemini.com, but this is courses.craftygemini.com. So just create a new account with the same login and then you'll be able to do it. We are working to move everybody to one place, all courses, all clubs, all individual classes and all students. And as you can imagine, it's gonna take us months because we have to manually do it and there are thousands of y'all over the years because I've been doing courses since like 2014. <laughs> Paid online courses on my site, okay? So, Nancy says, I can't believe Vanessa's sewing standing up. Girl, this is supposed to be more ergonomic. Even though this is not because I'm like, I like to sew when I sew standing, I need the desk to be here and I'm five foot nine, so I need up. And this is already up because I, I, I built this table myself actually. And so I made it to the height that I like for cutting, um, but not necessarily for sewing on here too. But yeah, I sew standing up all the time, especially when you do like TV shows and like the blueprint classes and stuff, you gotta be able to, like this, get everything in the one shot. You gotta do what you gotta do. All right, let's see. So I am about to sew up the entire inseam, this whole curve, and then I'm gonna hold up a pair of like, actually, no, I'm not. Let me stop lying. I need to top stitch the gusset. This is what happens when I'm talking to y'all. Just kidding, pretend. Yeah, Catherine is saying each video is no longer than 10 minutes. I think maybe there's a couple that are 10, 11, 12 minutes, maybe at the most, but most of the 41 videos are between four to 10 minutes in, in length. And I do that because 41 lessons, like I'm not trying to sit there and have anybody watch an hour long video. That's not how I roll. I want you to be able to watch it in bite-sized chunks. Watch a little bit, oh, okay, that was cool. Let me see what I get for my fabric. Okay, I learned something. Let me do, you know, and just break it up. Nobody wants to sit there for an hour, 45 minute video, that's super boring. Um, I recently sent out an email and I was like, I wouldn't want to sit there for that long without working on the project. <laughs> I want you to get up and start prepping the pieces and okay, now I've traced off my pattern. Even if you don't tackle the whole thing in one day, right? You want to be able to be like, okay, Today I cut out everything, you know, and tomorrow I'm going to start sewing or today I trace, tomorrow I cut out and then the next day start sewing. Um, I need a length. Oops, not that. I need a length in this. There we go. So yeah, the videos are not super long, but it's still over five hour, fi over five hours of content. But again, broken up into bite sized chunks. No need to sit there for super duper long. Patty says, I'm only seeing the leggings and the cardigan as courses. That's right, because that's all we have there on that new platform. We still have to move everybody over and all the classes and courses. But because I always say, you know, you get indefinite access to the courses, I don't want to put a hold on everybody's classes. You guys probably are working on old projects and stuff. So we've just left everything as it is on the regular craftygemini.com website. You can still access your courses as you normally would. We'll keep them there until we say, okay, hey, everybody's moved over. Now you can access them here, so they will definitely overlap, and that way you don't have to worry about you know being halfway through a project and being like, your website's down, it's not giving me access, right? So that's why all of them are still on craftygemini.com as they always have been, and as we move them over to the new platform, we'll just move everybody over manually. We, you know, we'll only announce it once it's all said and done. All right. Now let's stitch up that inseam. Ooh, and it's only 7.36, what, what? All right, let me go back to pinning this. Do we have any questions that I missed maybe? No? If anybody has questions about like where to access the course, remember courses.craftygemini.com, you'll see the leggings course. And there's already some reviews that some of you that are in the course and have made your leggings, have watched the videos. I've already gotten reviews and the course has been open a week, okay? so. I think that speaks to like, the videos are not that long, you can totally tackle them. And two, all the information is there for you to make these leggings because people have already made them. I'm not inventing this, you don't have to wait. It's not like, hey, the welcome video is up today when you sign up and then two weeks from now I'll post the next one. No, no, 
You pay today, you sign up at the early bird sale price of 65 bucks, and you can tonight watch the videos, okay? So they're all there, all the bonus videos on how to make this on a serger, how to hem it on a cover stitch machine. And one of the things that I mentioned in another live chat was that those bonus videos that I add on for, you know, how to make view A on a serger, how to hem the legs of the legging shorts, capris, whichever length on the cover stitch, they are especially great for those of you that don't have a serger and don't have a cover stitch to watch. Because if you ever think about getting more into garment clothing, it's cool for you to see it in this application so that you can say like, oh, I see what it does. I don't really need it. Or wow, I see what it does. I see why people use it. Let me save up to get one. But that way you can see it in actual use, not just like a shop telling you, hey, this is all the fancy things that it can do. You know, I walk you through the settings, how I set mine up and what I use it for, what you can and what you can't use it for, right? Because you can't hem on a serger. Was there a question? Yeah. Like what it is? So the question is, what machine are you using? So this is a little Everstone. This is Allie's machine. My daughter's eight. She's had this machine since she was four. This is her machine. You know, I had to ask for permission. <laughs> can, you, can I use your machine? But last time I asked her for it was because I was making her leggings. So she was like, of course, sure. So it's lightweight. It's easy for me to put on here. It's a computerized machine. It's pretty basic. I will swing it around. You can get it on Amazon. A lot of shops have it. I had three like this at uh, my shop, like when I taught kids at the sewing coop years ago. So it's just like a simple little machine. It's easy for me to have up here. And so this is something else. You don't have to have a fancy machine to make these leggings. Like I have fancy machines and I'm using this. It's fine, right? The key is one, to have the skills. Two, to have the right fabric, the right thread, the right needles, choosing the right stitch, adjusting your stitch length and stitch width accordingly based on the task that you're doing. As long as you understand all that, then yeah, I mean, I can use any basic machine and whip these out and they're not gonna pop on me, you know? Like once my sister puts them on, they're not gonna pop stitches. I have the right thread, the right needle, and I know what I'm doing. So that's what I'm trying to teach you all in my video lessons. Let me go back to here, I need a quarter inch seam. See that this machine, on my machine, I can press a button and the needle jumps. So it puts me right at a quarter inch away from the edge of the presser foot. I can do that on my Juki DX5, DX7, NX7. On this machine, you know, you have center needle position and far left for 5 8 inch. So I have to put it in the center and then I have to bump, 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 bump stitch width to move the needle over so that I can put myself at that quarter inch. So you just have to know how to get what you want done on the machine that you're using. But I mean, this is like a three or $400 machine, maybe. I don't even know. We've had it for five, for like four or five years. She's going to be nine next month. So we probably have had it for five years. Yep. So yeah, you don't gotta have a fancy machine, you don't have to have a serger, you don't have to have a cover stitch, but if you do, I share those bonus videos with you. Bye, Christina, she says she has to go. Everybody enjoy your weekend. We're having a fun little weekend at home. My son's 11th birthday was yesterday. Thank you to everybody who wished him a happy birthday on Instagram and Facebook. He feels so grown now. He says he feels like a grown man. <laughs> so cute. And tomorrow is my husband's birthday. Are you going to come on and say hi? Come on. So everybody can wish you a happy 41st birthday, y'all. He's turning 41 and he says he's damn near 50. He's the only person I know that jumps nine years and is like, oh, I'm 50. Say hi, Mr. Wilson. Hi, Mr. Wilson. Oh, Lord. <laughs> he's over here running tech for us tonight. Thank you. So his birthday's tomorrow. My son and him are just two days apart. So we over here celebration mode, eating all the things that we're not supposed to be eating. <laughs> all right. Yes, Barb says only three pieces for all sizes, correct? So three pieces for view A. The one that has the high waistband has three pieces. But view B only has two pieces. So that's the one that's easier more simple and it's great for kids because you just sew that elastic on, you turn it under, top stitch it, and it's like a quick way to crank out um, leggings, shorts, you know, for, for girls, if they're wearing like those little tight shorts, kind of like gymnastic shorts to wear under skirts and dresses, I make these all the time for my daughter. And because it has so many sizes, you know, they grow so quick, these kids, in six months, make them another one, slightly bigger, and another month, you know, and you could just keep making them, making them, making them in all the different sizes. Oh, look at that, they're all telling you happy birthday, Mr. Wilson. He hates attention. 
<laughs> uh, we are like legit opposites, y'all. It's so funny. I'm like, I love the camera. It's so fun. All right. That took me a little bit because, you know, you got to pay attention to what you're doing, especially when you're sewing the front and the back together. The gusset is what connects them in the center because, remember, that crotch gusset is going smack dab in the middle of them legs. Ooh, those are little, 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 little. <laughs> Don't forget, we have a waistband we need to attach to it, okay? And they are a size four. That's the cool thing about stretchy fabrics. Like, you make it and you're like, wow, they're so little. But then they stretch, for sure. All right. So now, did you see that? This was two pieces. So the whole body and then the one gusset that got sewn in in the middle. And so that construction process is what allows the, the shorts or the pants, whatever, not to have a seam going down the center front. The seam is only down the center back. My sister bikes and she's going to love these. Don't these look like biker shorts, like these funky geometric prints? I love these. I have these actually in capri length that I made for myself. I think I did. I think I was able to get more of this fabric in because we sold out of these kits too. But yeah, those are mine. Now she gets to have a little pair of shorts for herself. Awesome. Yay. Kathy Ann says she just signed up for the leggings course. Welcome. Welcome. Those of you that are joining the course, I'm crossing my fingers that you all are on Facebook also. Um, because if you are, you can request to join our private group called Sewing Clothes with Crafty Gemini. And one of the moderators will let you into the group. You can see what we're making. You can post pictures of your projects. Sometimes we even post like three different fabrics and ask for uh, suggestions like, hey, you know, I'm making the Clara leggings. Which fabric do you guys think I should use? Or if you're making this one with the, the view A waistband, you can always color block, right? You don't have to use the same fabric up top. So it makes it uh, a fun way to scrap bust. You can make the waistband be a solid color, or another funky print. You can post pictures there, ask for feedback from all the other members. We're happy to do that. And it's a great place to post pictures of your finished projects because like in five minutes, 15 people are like, oh, great job. You did amazing. Great work. And it feels so good, especially when you live with people who don't sew or don't appreciate it because like you'll run out of your sewing room and be like, look what I made. And they're all like, yeah, right? Don't we all struggle with that? It's like, okay, cool. It's like, no, no, I don't think you understand what it took to make this. <laughs> so our group is the place for you to go and post all your amazing makes and get that ego rub that we all so often need when we're tackling new and challenging projects, okay? Amanda says she just joined the Facebook group. Awesome, welcome. Um, Barb says you learn a lot on the Facebook platform too. Absolutely, people are constantly posting little hacks, little tips and things like that so we can all learn more from each other there. Jamie says, happy birthday, Brandon. I'm 41 too. I also feel like 50, she says. <laughs> oh, y'all are funny. All right, let me see. Now I'm going to stitch. This is the view A is the one with the contoured waistband. So as you can imagine, it doesn't take like a chunky elastic. View B is a little bit lower and uses a one inch wide elastic. This one uses three eighths inch wide elastic. Um, and those of you that ordered kits from us when they were in stock got two yards of each right? So that you can make any view you wanted with the fabric you ordered. We will continue to do that when we restock the kits. That way you don't have to worry or try to track down elastic these days. It's really tough no matter the width. Um, but I got you on that because we definitely uh, have that. All right. So let me start with these zigzags. Um, stitch width, stitch length. Let's try that. And you know, when I'm adjusting these stitch lengths and stitch width, I tell you what I'm doing in, in the videos of the video course, I tell you what I'm setting my things to so that you have a general idea in measurement, right? 2.5 millimeters, like most machines will have it in metric, 2.5, 3.0, blah, blah, blah. So for you to try it out, because you can't just press the zigzag on your machine and think that that default zigzag setting is gonna work for that application. It might be too narrow, it might be too short, it's not, you know, so I tell you in every video as we go to sew, I tell you, okay, so now I'm setting my st straight stitch to this length or I'm setting my zigzag to this and that. So those are things that you're not going to see in a pattern, okay? Like a printout pattern or a packet, it's not going to tell you your stitch length and stitch width. It's not going to happen. And that by itself can wreck your project in case you haven't already experienced that. I'm sure a lot of us have. All right, so... I'm gonna um, narrow that to 3.5 a little bit. This is the most fidgety part of view A. 
because you have to watch to see where you're aligning the zigzag above the stitch, uh, the stitch um, stitches like of that seam where we combine the waistband. But again, I cover every single step in the video lessons and you get a close up shot. You're not going to see it like this because it's not about my face. It's more about the actual step and the technique that I'm teaching you. And I actually tell you, try to hold it like this and see if that works for you. If not, try this, right? Because everybody has different fine motor skills. And because I'm right handed and hold things one way, doesn't mean that it's going to work for you. So try to aim for the goal, like what the point is. You want to have the elastic to the right side of the stitch line. You want a zigzag stitch. You want to have the corded marks um, held up. But whatever you need to do to hold it to get the job done in that specific seam, that's what you want to do. It doesn't matter how I'm doing it. I just tell you what you should be doing, and then you figure it out on your own based on, you know, your motor skills. Artie says, I just signed up for the class, and I've already ordered the pattern. Girl, you are almost there. Some of you have written me and said, I signed up for the leggings course, ordered my pattern, and I actually had fabric in my stash because they mistakenly ordered stretch fabric before, and they didn't know what to do with it. If you're one of those people and you have cotton spandex in your stash, this is going to be the perfect project for you. And you don't, you won't even have to go out and buy fabric. So think about your stash. If you have stretch fabric that you bought by mistake, this is the time to take it out. Another reason to never throw away or give away your fabric. You never know what project might pop up that you're going to need it for. Ah, Wendy says, I wish I was 41 again too. <laughs> they got all the jokes tonight. I told him, I'm like, I'm only 37, honey. I'm not even close to 40, okay? Mm -mm. I still got several years to go. <laughs> All right, there we go, back around to the end. So again, I'm working on a regular, I mean, on my eight-year-old daughter's sewing machine here. You'll need straight stitch and zigzag stitch, excuse me. All right, so... That's where that gets placed in. Now I need to um, swap out. It's a different zigzag stitch. That's the thing that people think, oh, it's easy. Yeah, it's easy when you know what you're doing. But if you don't know what you're doing, it's a little bit rough. Or it can be at least. So that's why I have 41 video lessons, you know. Um, stitch with and stitch length okay and you know sometimes people think that like on a basic machine like this that it'll get hung up it's not going to be able to sew through through stretch fabrics so if you're someone who has a basic machine and maybe you tried to sew stretch knits before and it just hasn't worked for you try it again you know if you sign up for the class watch the videos Put into play the different things that I'm telling you, the right thread, the right needle, the stitch, how to adjust the different stitches, versus whether it's the stitch width or the stitch length. And I bet you, I mean, you could do this. I've, I've sewn leggings before on $65 machines. Y'all, you can do it. You don't have to have a fancy machine. And I know that everything on the internet tells us otherwise. You know, you need the next biggest, greatest, most expensive fancy machine. I mean, I have expensive machines, but they not like them $20,000 ones they be selling out there. No, ma'am. This is my work, but I ain't spending 20 grand on a machine. I'm more about getting them for what they can do, right? Like the different bells and whistles in applications that I know I will use. But leggings, I mean, there's zero need for specialty machines here. Yes, a serger will allow you to whip them up faster. That's one reason to get a serger, right? If you're making a lot of them. I mean, I can make a pair of leggings, if, especially if it's view B, because view B, I can attach the elastic waistband, like the, the waist, the elastic to the waistline, I should say, on the serger. So, I mean, I can make a pair of those leggings in less than 10, like, I mean, maybe like 11 minutes, but definitely less than 15. But again, you got to know what you're doing because you can't whip through a serger on some fabric. If you cut that fabric away, you can't put it back. So, y'all already heard, it's about to be 8 o'clock. In four hours, because I'm Eastern time here, at midnight, the price is going up to $97 on this leggings course. Right now, it's $65. So if you want to sign up, you want to make leggings, you want to join our online Facebook group where we sewing clothes with Crafty Gemini, that specific group. We just talk about sewing clothes there because you know I, I sew all the things, but that's just the place for sewing the uh, clothes, okay? 
So that place is there. You can join us there. We have our own little online community going on specifically for my tutorials or courses specifically on clothes. All right. All right. Let me find the seam here. Oh, Liz is asking what's the Facebook page again. You probably just heard me say it. It is Sewing Clothes with Crafty Gemini. You can request to be added. Y'all, we are playing Bobbin Chicken right now. Um, yeah. We'll see if this, if I make it with this bobbin because I just peeked in and I have barely anything. Have y'all heard that term before, bobbin chicken? You're playing chicken with the bobbin? We'll see. We'll see. Um, we shall see. Maybe I should shorten this a little bit and use a little less thread. <laughs> Fingers crossed I make it through. I probably won't though. I'm not that good. Yeah, there's barely any thread there. We'll see, we'll see, come on. What is the need for the gusset, Antonia's asking. The gusset is there to complete the leggings. Because there is no center front seam or side seams, you gotta have a way to bring the legs together that has some room in that area. So the, con the design, the pattern drafting of it, in order for the leggings not to have a center front seam, that it has to have that gusset. Like that's the design of it, right? There are some leggings patterns that have center front seams and then you won't have gussets. Instead you have like a front crotch seam that's like a, a curved like that, just like we have it on the back here, but you would have it on the front and on the back pieces. In this one, you don't have that because you have that gusset. So it's just like a, a construction thing. <laughs> Mary says, just put in a new, a new bobbin V, not worth the hassle. You know, I like to live a little bit on the wild side. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I do this to myself. It's like, come on, come on, come on. And then you're right there to the end. You're like, yeah, I should have probably just done it. But I made it at least to this part. But see, I pulled out so much. Yeah, I need to wind it. I'm just going to dump what's on it because there's barely anything. Some of you are probably screaming at me like my mom would. You're wasting the thread. <laughs> Sheila says, I play it a lot. Bob and chicken. Jen says, I've played it, but didn't know it had a name. Bob and chicken. Girl, now you know. Plain Bob and chicken. All right, let's wind this bobbin real quick. Just a little bit. I'm literally down to the last step. So I'm constructing the waistband. This is view A. I'm adding the waistband to it. And then I just got to hem the legs. And they're done. Jean says, how do you get your name on the kit list? So I talked about this early on tonight's chat. We don't um, wait list or pre-sell our kits. Unfortunately, I want them to be in-house. I want to have the correct amount of fabric before I start selling kits to make sure that I have enough of two yard cuts for each one of the kits. So when we restock them and we get our fabric orders, we have multiple fabric orders already placed. And once I get them in, you know, then we'll restock. But if you are in the course, all registered students in my leggings course will get an email letting you know when we restocked. We actually just sent out an email today for the cardigan class. For the students that are in that course, we restocked and a bunch of people snagged their kits for the cardigan course. All right. Well, that didn't take too long. All right, so tonight at midnight, we got, what, four hours left? Yep, four hours left, and the price goes up to 97 bucks. Mary Kay says, I just bought the pattern and signed up for the class. Welcome, welcome. Phyllis says, I signed up for the class, but I need fabric. So, yeah, so if you watch the video lessons, right, I talk about four or five different types of fabrics that if you have maybe a store near you where you're shopping and stuff, or you can find some online. If you don't want to wait for our kits, you know, that's always an option. But we will be restocking when we do. Again, we'll send out an email to everybody letting you know that the kits are back in stock. It's a lot of fabric to restock, y'all. It's hard to, to order that much and be able to like reorder and reorder because imagine if it's two yard cuts per person, that is enough for you to make even the largest U.S. woman's size 22 size at the full length, right? Because the longer you're making the leggings, the more fabric you're going to need. The larger the size, the more fabric you're going to need. So we wanted all the kids to include two yards each. So even a regular 25-yard bolt, I mean, that's 25 yards of fabric. It's only enough for 12 kids. Like, that's nothing. <laughs> That'll sell out in like two minutes. So 
I have to order hundreds and hundreds of yards at a time. Um, and then you can imagine it takes time to cut the fabric, right? My people got to cut the fabric, fold the fabric, bundle them up. So as soon as we get them in stock, though, we will be restocking and relisting. But everything, you know, as now, everything is so delayed between manufacturers being short-staffed, the postal service delays, it's just a lot right now. And it's nuts because everybody's home and everybody's sewing. <laughs> so people need supplies. I just went to order some uh, Ulfa rotary cutter blades for my own self and the, my distributor sold out in all the sizes. I'm like, oh my word. Kathy Ann says, I ordered the pattern and joined the Facebook group. Yippee. Welcome, welcome, everybody. That 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 uh, sewing group on Facebook, that sewing clothes with Crafty Gemini is the title. It's about to be lit up in there. So many new people. We love it, love it, love it. All right. Let me start sewing this. I should probably put a tag for my sister on the back. These are some little tags I got at Fancy Tiger Crafts. Does anybody live in Denver? It's a cool little shop they have. I'm going to miss going there because I used to go every time I went to film for Blueprint. And these little tags, this, it just says this is the back. Not that she needs it, but that's another thing. Because this pattern doesn't have a center front seam, there's only a seam down the center back, you're not going to get mixed up by the front or the back because the side that doesn't have any seam is obviously the front and the side that has a seam is the back. But I'm going to insert this little thing here for her. Just because I can, because I made them. All right, we're back to straight stitch. I need my quarter inch seam. On a project like this, make sure that you are stopping with the needle down whenever you can. This machine is like, when you press the needle down, then it stops with the needle down. But if you push the needle button to bring it up, then the next time it'll stop with the needle up. It's kind of weird. But you got to know your sewing machine too, right? So whenever you stop sewing, and this really applies to any project, and you stop with the needle up, if you lift that presser foot to reposition at all, you don't have a needle holding your spot. So your stuff is going to move. And so you might have like a jump stitch the next time you start sewing. So just try to stop, especially with pins and zigzag stitches. If you need to stop and reposition something, just stop with the needle down. So it's at least holding your spot. That's why, you know, when people are looking to upgrade from like a most basic, basic machine, I always tell them like, look for something that has that needle up down so that you can make it stop every time with the needle down. Some people don't like it, but I find like almost every project, I stop. Anytime I stop, I stop with that needle down. All right. Ah, Carla says, you did too much damage at that store. Girl, every time I went, I was dropping dollars on dollars. It was, they just have everything and it's so amazing. All right, I'm coming around here. It's like yarn, fabric, quilting stuff, apparel fabric, Japanese fabrics. I mean, so many gorgeous apparel fabrics, roving stuff for knitting, crochet, for weaving, for spinning. If you're in Denver, holler at my friends at Fancy Tiger Crafts. You can buy from them online too. They have an online shop. They were doing like curbside pickup, I know, early on in this whole thing. Um, let's see. Okay, so you see how now they're a little bit longer because we added that waistband to it. So that's good. And then I just got a hem. And so for nylon spandex, and I talk about this in the course because since there are two views, I make one of view B um, out of cotton spandex and then I make the other one out of a nylon spandex. And that way you can see my hands and I talk a little bit about like one is more slippery, uh, slippery than the other, tips to keep in mind, all those little things that you're never gonna read in a pattern that's why I like to do video courses and so many videos so that you can see like what all it takes, you know, it's different than reading it in a book for sure. So like nylon spandex, I can't hit this with an iron to set this hem under it just no. So instead you could use pins. I'm just going to wing it. 
And this, the hem allowance calls for three quarters of an inch. This is another thing. The hem allowance calls for three quarter inch hems, but say the, the shorts, you try them on maybe before you hem them. If you see that they hit a little bit high and you don't want to hem that much under, hem a little bit sh shorter, you know, like a little bit less so that the shorts fit a little bit longer. You can adjust all those things. You know, you don't have to cut the shorts at the line that they tell you to in the pattern. You can make them longer. You can make the capris longer. I like the length of the capris because I find that some leggings patterns that I've tried in the past, like the, the bottom hem lands like right at my calf and my calves are huge. So like they roll right up and it just goes boom and stands like right under my knee where this pattern, I don't have that issue. Cause I think I got a question like that today. One lady asked if I was showing how to make the calves bigger. You don't really need it for this pattern. I have found that they fit me great, especially if you're making sure to use a stretch fabric that has that minimum amount of stretch in it. All right, we are gonna zigzag this hem real quick um, with a little bit narrower, stitch length a little bit longer. And I'm just going off of what I know based on this machine, as far as like the stitch width and stitch length settings. Okay, looks good. Hey, a perfect hem with no pins. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, no pop stitches. We're in business. Oh my gosh, she goes. She is gonna love these. Don't you think, Brandon? They look like her, like little biker <laughs> shorts for biking around. All right. Is Kathleen Beckman on here? She says, this will be my first attempt at making clothes, scared to death, but confident. Girl, yeah. We don't call you the machine for nothing, Kathleen. We call this lady the machine, okay? She would roll up to my retreats with bags and teddy bears and projects for everybody. And she'll whoop out 20 of them in no time. You can totally make these leggings, girl. This is nothing for you. You are the machine. All right. Let me go ahead and hem the other one. OMG, over here talking, talking, talking. I wonder if my sister's on. That would be super cool. I'd be like, look at your shorts, girl. Francine says, I wasn't going to do it, but I did. I got the course, purchased the pattern, and something else. I have daughters and granddaughters, so I have to use it. That is exactly the deal. 27 sizes. You can make it for everybody, even if not for yourself. And remember what I said, that I teach skills and techniques via a project. So if you're making these leggings for your daughter, your granddaughter, you don't have to make them for yourself. Make them for somebody else. But now you're gaining the knowledge and the hands-on experience of working with stretch fabrics. Then if you want to make yourself a dress or a pencil skirt or whatever you want to do, and it calls for stretch fabric, you're going to be more well equipped to tackle that. It's not just about the project. I mean, this is just like a cute, fun project that we can learn how to work with stretch knit fabrics on, right? But it's more about learning the skills and techniques while we're actually making something that we can show off later that is proof of the skills that you have just learned with the help of the course. Y'all, this was so easy. And of course, I've made a ton of these already, but you can see what happens. After you make several, how much easier, quicker. I'm on a slow machine here. This machine is nowhere near my standards, if you know what I'm saying. Y'all that know me and my quilting foot, where I step on these machines 2,000 stitches per minute, that's how I like to sew, fast. So imagine, this machine, I mean, it's like a, um, it's my daughter's machine. It's simple, it's a great beginner machine, something like that, you know, for people who can grow with the machine. We teach a lot of kids on them. And, um, and that's what I'm using to whip this up. And I still whipped it up. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, so cute. Yes, we have a question. So the question is, should you pre-wash the fabrics in the kits? Those of you that got kits last week. So in the video course, I go over this and I talk about cotton spandex or any fabric that has natural fibers in it. Absolutely, yes, pre-wash it, okay? Most of the time, fabrics that have cotton in them are going to shrink by like on the lengthwise grain. So it won't really affect the stretch going this way, but it will affect how short or how long the shorts end up being. 
Now, the better the quality of the fabric you're using, the less it's going to shrink, right? And I talk about this in the course where I give an example where my kids and I, uh, we went to Joann's and bought some cotton stretch, some knit fabric, because they wanted to make pajama pants, and so we just bought one yard, right? They're little kids, one yard is plenty. We pre-washed it because it was all cotton, and it shrunk by six inches. So we ended up with 30 inches, and by the time we took up the waistband and hemmed it, my son had like capri length pajama pants, okay? So you have to keep in mind what type of fiber content the fabric has. Um, so if you order the cotton spandex from us, definitely pre-wash it before you go to cut out your fabric pieces. There, it's not gonna shrink by six inches for sure because I've made plenty of them with it, but you will lose a little bit in the shrinkage uh, in the lengthwise, okay? So that's that. If you bought the nylon spandex from us or the, like the digital printed stuff, this stuff is color fast. It's ain't nothing gonna happen to this. I don't pre-wash the nylon spandex. I just start to cut in. So that's that. If it has a natural fiber in it, a rayon, a cotton, stuff like that, bamboo, hemp, whatever, yes, pre-wash. Okay. What if you always hang dry clothes? Would you still wash the cotton spandex? Absolutely. I would still wash it. We hung clothes here for a solid year and a half, and anything that had cotton in it, we still pre-washed. Definitely. Francine says, I regret it when I don't go for it. <laughs> I'm glad you joined up. Awesome. Kathy Beckman says that early bird sale price, I had to get it. Well, I'm glad to hear that if you're just tuning in, the early bird sale price is good for another just under four hours. 65 bucks right now at midnight tonight Eastern time, the price goes up to $97, okay? So that's that. Remember, you get unlimited access to the videos. You can access them whenever you want, as long as obviously you have internet access. There's 41 step-by-step -step videos. And I'm so glad that I got to whip up another pair of legging shorts here for my sister. These Clara ones are gonna be super cute on her. And I'm gonna get her to take a picture too. I've used her before in past years for sure as a little model. So these will look super cute on her. I'm super happy that I got to whip them up so you can see no fancy machines. I'm super distracted here. I barely used pins. Y'all can do it, okay? Just watch the video lessons one by one. Gather your supplies and just follow everything like I teach you there. And then jump over to Facebook and join my Sewing Clothes with Crafty Gemini group so we can let you in and you can start posting pictures of your fabric and the legging shorts, capris, or full-length leggings that you are making, all right? So thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. This was super fun. Thank you, and I will see you all next week for Whip Wednesdays. Remember, I go live every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern and Friday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel. So I'll see y'all next week. Bye.